Good afternoon, sir. Can I interest you in some chocolate? Chocolate? Chocolate! Chocolate! Hello, everybody. This is AG here, and if you're wondering why I'm wearing sunglasses, it's because I like roller coasters. And I know I said in the, in the last video that, oh, I, didn't, I don't think I'm going to do any roller coaster videos. Well, you know what? It's the best thing I can come up with for, uh, for this week's uh, video here, so... What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my, my favorite home park, my favorite park. It, it's my home park, and it's it's my favorite park, so it's my favorite home park. A little wordplay right there. But I figured I'd take um, all the roller coasters at uh, my home park, Hershey Park in Hershey, Pennsylvania. That, that good old sweet place where all your favorite chocolate confectionaries come from here in the United States of America. And, and rank them, because it's a very great park, um, very clean. I've gone there practically my entire life. And um, I absolutely love the roller coasters that they have to offer. And um, for a lot of you guys out there, you might not uh, be used to a lot of the terminology that I use in today's video. But hey, if you do, cool, cool to have another uh, and coaster enthusiast in here. Now, of course, I have not been a coaster enthusiast for that long. I want to say my coaster enthusiasm started last year, around the summer of 2019, when the me and the folks uh, took a vacation down to Virginia, and uh, we visited King's Dominion, which is also another great park. And uh, you know, if you guys like this top um, or this coaster ranking list, not gonna be top ten because there's more than ten coasters at Hershey Park. But if you like this ranking list, I might do it for some other parks that I visit. I've only visited a few parks, um, but I hope to expand that next year. Um, you know, we're, we're just hoping with that one, you know? You know what I mean? But uh, but either way, I figured, you know what? This is something I know and uh, something I want to talk about and something I enjoy talking about. So if you enjoy it, leave a like, please subscribe. And uh, yeah, let's, let's jump into every coaster at Hershey Park ranked. So I am uh, far from being the only person who has done this. There are probably multitudes of videos out there on uh, every coaster at Hershey Park being ranked, but uh, you might be surprised with my ranking here, and and it's partly because I'm a I'm a weird dude. Um, you know, I don't you know hold the same standards as a traditional coaster enthusiast, I guess you can say. Maybe it's just because I'm very new into the business, but uh, either way, uh, we're gonna have fun with this. I'm gonna go in detail on why I like or should I say dislike some of these coasters, and uh, we're just gonna roll with it here. I have it kind of split up into three categories. Um, bad or boring, um, which, you know, that can be either really boring or bland, kiddie coaster, or, or something that just, that just, just sucks, you know? There are a lot of coasters out there in the world that are like that. Thankfully, Hershey Park doesn't have too many of those, uh, but they got one, and we'll get to that in a moment. Uh, then we got the, the medium range, which are good coasters, um, at least in my opinion, um, which, you know, there are a lot more good coasters than bad coasters at Hershey Park, which is very very nice if you ever want to go visit there and then of course the uh, the best of the best the high class world class i guess you can say coasters uh the ones that all the thrill seekers are going to be rushing to the ones that are going to have the longest lines and the ones that uh your little your little four-year-old nephew probably won't enjoy too much but um but you know th they'll get there eventually <laughs> So let's go ahead and uh, start out with the uh, bad slash boring category, and we're going to jump right into bad with uh, number 14, uh, Wildcat. Um, or, or should we say, RMC this darn thing already. Now, um, it would be a bit of a disservice to do that to, uh, to GCI. Obviously, it was their first coaster in their home state of Pennsylvania, and uh, I don't think Rocky Mountain should come all the way over here and, and, and tear that thing apart, um, as awesome as it would be for, uh, for that to become a hybrid. Uh, that would be disrespectful to GCI, and I don't want that to happen. But if GCI is just up the road... Um, Maybe they can come in and, and do something with it. Maybe retrack it. Um, let's just say, the reason why I and many, many other enthusiasts do not like this coaster, it's because it is so rough. It hurts. It actually literally hurts to ride this. Not exactly what you want uh, when you're on an amusement ride. And um, Wildcat, unfortunately, um, is in the very painful category and there's one part on this course that is really bad. It's near the end of the ride. And there's like this, you're going, making, I think, a left turn. And you're low to the ground. And there's this like jolt in the track while you're turning. 
and you know for someone like me who has who has back problems and occasionally has you know spinal stenosis issues if i'm having a flare up and i'm riding that and i hit that little jolt i'm not feeling good the rest of the day um so yeah number 14 is wildcat it's extremely rough of course gci's first ride so has a bit of historical value to it obviously gci has gone on to do greater things in other parks but uh hey they uh, had a bit of a rocky start hint hint uh if you know what i mean on to uh, number 13, it's a uh, good old Zamperla family coaster, or should I say kitty coaster, but hey, the whole family can enjoy it, as long as you're not too tall, uh, because uh, you could hit your head if you're tall enough on this one, that's the Coco Cruiser, uh, and this is a cute coaster, it's boring, but it is a kitty coaster, we all know in the, in the coaster community that, you know, kitty coasters are, you know, they're there for the kids, and, you know, they get used to things before they go on to uh they're the big stuff, and uh, Coco Cruiser is a cute little coaster, and it's interesting, you know, I've gone to this park pretty much my whole life, and then all of a sudden it was just there, you know, obviously when it comes to a kiddie coaster, you know, a lot of parks don't make too much of a big deal out of it, but all of a sudden, there it was, it was just, it was just sitting there, and I, and I wrote it, you know, as an adult, well, as a teenager, it's been a little bit since I've written it, uh, but I enjoyed it, 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 you know, it's whatever, it's a kiddie coaster, there's not much to say about it, it's the same old Zampera little kiddie coaster, you know, everyone loves them, every little park has them, you know, here, here's your little coaster, uh, but, uh, you know, it, it's number 13 for a good reason, it's a kiddie coaster, but I would rather ride that than uh, to get my back completely uh, messed up on Wildcat, so uh, Coco Cruiser is not the worst coaster at Hershey Park. Gonna move on to number 12, and uh, that's another kiddie Moving more over the family coaster, uh, Aerodynamics Mine Train Trailblazer, and this is a, a very special coaster to me. Um, it was the first, um, well, wasn't the first coaster I was on, but it was the first. Well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it was the first major coaster I was on, but I think it was. I think it was the second coaster I ever rode uh, in my lifetime. So you know, it ha has a bit of a historical value to me. Um, but you know, I went, I went to Hershey Park twice over the summer, and you, you know, as a kid. You know, growing up, this this was my ride, you know, because, you know, I didn't ride any coaster with an inversion until I was almost 16 years old. Um, I'm now 21, so thankfully we've had a few years of doing that. But, um, but uh, yeah, Trailblazer, that was the ride for me as a kid. You know, I wouldn't get on any of those big coasters, but a Trailblazer, oh, man, that was that was super fun, you know. And uh, n now that I've gotten on on the Sky Rushes and King Dakas in the world, uh, Trailblazer just doesn't do it for me anymore, and, um, it's kind of sad because I really enjoyed this coaster as a kid, but, uh, you know, it, it's for the families. It's a great coaster, um, for, for younger kids who want to kind of move up in the, in the coaster world, get to, to more advanced stuff. Um, you know, it's n probably one of the weakest era mine trains out there. I've only been on a couple. I have been on the Runaway Mine Train at Great Adventure. That one's a lot more fun, and, um, Trailblazer... There's not much to it, but doesn't mean it's bad. It's just, bleh, it's just there. It's old. It's a very historical coaster for Hershey Park. I hope they never get rid of it. That thing has a lot of history to me. Um, but uh, it, it's just, it's just not the greatest thing anymore for me. And uh, unfortunately, I put it at uh, number twelve. Moving on to the good category, and these are coasters that I find really good. And these first two that I'm going to mention are below the next four um so you know the 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 four higher coasters in this category are really really close for me um but, uh, these two right here they're kind of on their own little level but they are still good um and they also are you know more family style coasters um uh, number 11 laugh track um i enjoy it and, and it kind of falls in the boring category for me it has really great theming, obviously. They did a great job with all the theming inside of there. Uh, one thing, though, uh, that, uh, you know, it's an indoor coaster. And uh, like I said, I was at Hershey Park this year. Um, obviously, we know what the this year is. Maybe not the safest coaster this year. Maybe not. Um, you know, all in all, it's still, you know, still really fun to ride it this year. Um, of course, uh, MRAG spinning coaster, uh, it, it, it's fun in one direction. If you're actually going forward, I think it's much more fun than it is if you're going backwards. If you're going forward, I actually like it when you're going through those, those fast speeds, the little fast transitions. Um, I'm going in a forward motion instead of a backwards motion. If you're going backwards on this coaster, it, it's actually quite boring, um, sadly enough. And you actually don't even really get to see anything if you're going backwards on this coaster either. So, uh, 
yeah, you know, it's interesting. I a very great theming, but a very good family coaster. Um, like another one, like Trailblazer, for those you know, for those little kitties to you know, kind of move up in the coaster world a little bit and uh, get to a better ride. But all in all, a great coaster. Um, just you know, not not world class or anything. It's there. It's a good ride for the kids. I think it's another important thing to mention. Hershey Park is sort of a not really a kids park, but it's it's definitely a lot more family oriented than a lot of other parks. So that's why you got a lot of these these you know kind of family style coasters but laugh track you know for a family style coaster is still really good number 10 on my list we're in the top 10 now and this one right here and you might be wondering uh, why haven't you mentioned a certain coaster yet a lot of people put this one a lot lower and i understand why it, it's wild mouse uh, the most generic name for a coaster in the world uh, because it is in fact a uh, wild mouse coaster However, and, and this is this is kind of where it gets a little more personal to me, this was my first ever credit. It was the first ever roller coaster I went on. I was probably six or seven years old, and it scared the living daylights out of me at the time. Um, riding it now, and I've ridden a lot of other Wild Mouse coasters, I actually still enjoy it. I find it to be more thrilling than Laugh Track and Trailblazer, obviously in the Coca Cruiser as well. And um, it's just so much fun. I love it. You know, it's a small coaster. It is a family coaster, but there is a lot of thrill to it. And I think you know, Wild Mouse coasters tend to get overlooked a little bit in the community. Obviously, they're not the the most thrilling coasters in the world, but they do have a lot more thrill aspect to them than than say other coasters, especially here at Hershey. Um, number ten, obviously not my favorite Wild Mouse in the world. Everyone's favorite Wild Mouse is Dark Knight, a great adventure, and it is my favorite Wild Mouse as well, of course. But this coaster, this exact Wild Mouse at Hershey Park, was the first coaster I ever rode. And uh, I probably didn't get on it for another 10 years after I was on it as a little kid. But uh, ever since I got back on it a few years ago, you know, got back into the coaster game, I've absolutely loved this thing. And um, I ride it every time I can. Unfortunately, it was closed all year. Didn't get a chance to ride it. Um, it might be open for, um, for, for Christmas Candy Lane, possibly. Um, I don't know if I'll get there little ways from me but we'll just have to see but either way wild mouse number 10 i know that's a high one but uh really enjoy this this coaster obviously my first ever coaster that i rode and i find it to be very fun the ride as well very solid ride and uh, i enjoy it more than laugh track so that's why it's number 10. next on my list number nine um and this is where it gets really close number six through number nine are like really close and i had a hard time ranking these but uh, I, I figured, you know, let, let's go with this, the best overall ride. Um, and number nine is Sidewinder. This is the first inverted coaster on this list. And I really enjoy Sidewinder, but it is a very common coaster at many parks. Obviously, you have a coma, boomerang. Very common to see those things. However, it is actually the only boomerang I've ever ridden before, so... I can't, I can't really, you know, judge it uh, to, to any other boomerangs or anything like that. I really do enjoy it, but it is a little bit rough, obviously. One of the older coasters at the park, I think, built in 1991. Um, so it's older than me, so, you know, it's uh, it's definitely a little rough. I'm rough already, you know, and I'm, I've only been around 21 years instead of 30. So, uh, yeah, it, it's a fun coaster. Um, you know, it usually doesn't have a long line, which, uh, which is nice. You know, if you want to get a quick ride on a semi-thrilling coaster um definitely recommend it but um yeah it's good you know I, I don't think there's anything particularly wrong with it especially considering how old it is um the, the one the one thing about it um is that it's just a little too rough i think for a general coaster even i think they changed the trains i don't know when they did it but i think they did that but it's still you know compared to these these other three um it, it's definitely the roughest of these of these four in between my ranking of number six and number nine um, so I've decided, you know, let me put this number nine, you know, not many people really care too much about this coaster. It's there. It's good. That, that, that's it. So if I call a boomerang, what else is there to say about it? Number eight on this list is probably the oldest. Yeah. Yeah. It's the oldest coaster at Hershey Park. I shouldn't, I should know my Hershey Park history here. It's the Comet. And I, uh, I almost put this above the next one on my list, but, uh, I just felt that this one was a little less mild, a little little less intense, um, but all around, for how old it is, it has held up very well. Obviously, you know, these older coasters, they've, they've done a lot of work to them over the years, but the Comet has held up very well. It's a very nice, pretty smooth uh, wooden roller coaster, and it's got, a, got some airtime to it, you know? It's got some fast speeds, and I really do enjoy it. 
Um, you know, obviously it's not the greatest wooden coaster in the world, but it is a Hershey Park classic, and, uh, you know, you gotta give it, uh, credit, uh, where it's due there. Um, you know, yeah, there's not much to say in terms of how it just, this is a nice ride. Um, nothing too ultra special about it, but, uh, all around, you know, it's a good wooden coaster. Uh, a million times better than Wildcat, so, uh, you know, definitely, you know, it's always got a long line. Um, it's a great coaster for the whole family, too, because, you know, it, it's not too intense, um, it's still got a pretty, pretty good drop, and, you know, I can imagine back in the day, in 1946, this was a pretty, pretty intense ride, uh, for those folks back, uh, back in time. Nowadays, you know, it, it's, a, you know, it's there, you know, it's a great, like I said, a great coaster for the families, um, but I enjoy it, you know, Comet, definitely a great coaster, Hershey Park, um, but not quite as good as, as the best wooden roller coaster, which is Lightning Racer at number seven. And, and I know some, a lot of people, a lot of uh, enthusiasts put Thunder and Lightning in the two separate credits. I personally don't like doing that, even though actually both both sides are completely different from each other. Um, but uh, still, Lightning Racer, it, it, you know, and it, it's not my favorite wooden roller coaster in the world. A lot of people do give it a lot of credit. You know, dare I say, this is a bit of a con controversial statement. Uh, I know I said we weren't going to do any controversy on here, but this one, this one will be a little controversial. I think it's a bit overrated. Um, it, it's not, it's not as intense as a lot of people make it out to be. Um, it, it, it really sometimes almost feels like Comet in the fact that it's not too wild. But it, it is longer, I think. I'm pretty sure it's longer, regardless of what side you're on. And it is a little bit more intense. Way better than uh, than its uh, compadre um, Wildcat. Obviously, they're both GCIs. This is the better GCI at the park, no doubt about it. But um, you know, it, it's nothing special in my opinion. A lot of people give it a lot of credit. Maybe just because it gets compared to Wildcat all the time, and anything looks great next to that thing. Um, but uh, but I do think it's the best wooden roller coaster in the park just by a notch. It could depend on the day too, you know. Sometimes Comet could be better than, than Lightning Racer, and uh, it's just a tight one. I, I enjoy it. You know, obviously it's got great theming. I think, like, one side wins all the time at this point. Um, I, I can't remember which side it is. It has aged a little bit. It is 20 years old, but uh, it is still a great wooden roller coaster. It isn't too rough. That's the big thing, I think, when you get a wooden roller coaster. But I don't think there's too much air time involved with it. Um, a little, lot more on the lateral side, at least as far as I can remember. It's been a while since I've ridden it. Obviously, it was back in August, I think, last time I rode it. So it's been a little bit, but um, all in all, a good ride. And um, you know, definitely a good coaster. And the best wooden roller coaster at Hershey Park. And the next coaster on our list is the best of the good category. And unfortunately, this uh, this ride was closed for the season. Super duper looper. Uh, and it's also got some historical value to it. It's the first looping coaster on the East Coast, obviously. Um, out there in Magic Mountain, they had Revolution. That being the first inverted coaster, a uh, modern inverted coaster, um... And uh, that was back all the way out in California. But uh, we got our own little version of Revolution over here in uh, Pennsylvania. I think it was 19, 19, 1974. I could be wrong. These dates are approximate. I'm an idiot and I didn't research enough. But Super Duper Liver is super fun. Uh, and, you know, I've always kind of compared it in a way to Trailblazer. But I've realized that it is way better than Trailblazer. And the fact that uh, it has a loop for one thing. And it is more intense. It's a pretty fast ride. And it's really fun, especially going through that tunnel at the end. Um, lots, lots of fun memories on that one. Uh, it's a good, you know, transition ride too. A good family ride, and um, it's definitely a great coaster for those those kids who are maybe a little bit scared of inversions um, to, to to get on that ride and you know get that get that inversion out of the way because once you get that inversion out of the way, you're home free. You can ride anything. Interestingly enough, though, this was not the first coaster with an inversion. That's a little bit farther up on our list, but um, absolutely love Super Duper Looper. It, it's not like the, the other coasters um, at Hershey Park. Obviously, it's on the more mild side, but it's still, it's another classic at Hershey Park. But And it's, hold, it's held up very well um, in time, and uh, just definitely all around a fun, fast ride. And uh, I hope I hope they get the ride in next year. Hopefully, they reopen it next year. Um, obviously, it was a little bit disappointing that it was closed this year, but uh, definitely looking forward to uh, getting back on that classic ride in 2021. <laughs> And now we are moving on to the world class category. I guess you say world world class, you know. Um, and not all these coasters, I think, would generally be considered world class overall. 
But in, in terms of, you know, just being those those really, really good coasters, those coasters where everybody, you know, including the non-enthusiasts, are packing the lines for, uh, these are the five ones. And you probably know which five they are if you've gone to Hershey Park before. Um, but you're definitely going to be surprised with what you hear in this top five. We're going to start right into it with number five. This one may not surprise a few of you. It may surprise some of you. It's Candemonium. And I was super excited. This was like my number one bucket list item for 2020. And thankfully, I actually got to ride it this year. I didn't think I would there for, for a little bit. But I got to ride it. Really glad I did. And I um, was a little disappointed. Now, I've only ridden two B&M Hypers in my lifetime. One of my favorite B&M Hypers. Of, well, the other one I've ridden is Nitro. And I've ab absolutely loved that ride. This is like a, a, a Nitro Junior in a way. Um, it, it's, I don't know... The, the good parts about it, obviously it's being m Hyper, super smooth. There's nothing inherently wrong with, with the roughness of the ride. It's not a bad ride in any way. But there's a lot of wasted potential on this thing, unfortunately. Then again, too, if you know where Hershey Park is situated, it is a very tight little area. It's not like, you know, Great Adventure where they can stretch that thing out miles on end and then come back. Uh, Candemonium did have limited space to work with, so I give them that. But, um, they could have done a little bit more with this one. Um, or should I say, a little bit less. Um, obviously you start a great first drop, great first airtime hill. I really like that the first hill you get is a straight up and straight down and not the curve like it is on Nitro. At least I, I think, I think Nitro goes to a curve first. It's been a little bit since I've been there, didn't get a chance to go to Great Adventure this year. But, um... Yeah, you know, Hershey, they, you know, or is it Candemonium? I mean, it's, it's, you know, it's basically Hershey-monium, you know, because it's just a way of advertising uh, their, their, their products, essentially. Uh, first time they've done that, um, we'll get to the name in a moment. But, um, but yeah, you get that first, you know, airtime hill, really good idea to do that. Then you get the turnaround, and you come back onto another airtime hill. That's my favorite one. My favorite part about Nitro are the, the airtime hills at the end um, and that's the only one you get in terms of those really short airtime hills. Then you go on to, um, and I, it's been a while since I've done it, so I could have this backwards, unfortunately. But, um, then you get into, uh, a trim break. Sometimes it's on, sometimes it's not. This one isn't the worst trim break in the world, um, but it's there. Obviously, a lot of people like that transition. I think that's pretty cool where you kind of step out and then come back in. Really enjoy that. Um, but then the worst part of this ride is kind of near the end. When it's just before it's going around the Kisses Fountain, there's that trim break there, and it just kills it. I, why? Why is it there? Why? I don't. I don't understand that. It's like I enjoy B&M Hypers a lot, even though I've only ridden two. I, I get the gist of them, and I, I really don't understand why there's a trim break going through that 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 180. Maybe if we didn't have one, people would black out more. But on Nitro, you black out or, you know, gray out all the time uh, on, up on that helix. So, I don't know what's the deal here with this one. Um, but, you know, it'd be so cool to rush through that that Kisses Fountain area um, in, in full speed. That trim break just kills it and uh, kind of ruins the ride. And even that first one kind of does too. I just don't find either trim break on the ride to be that necessary. Um, but I'm not an engineer. I, I don't know if they would be going too fast through those corners and it'd be unsafe. I, I don't know. But that that really does kill it for me. And, you know, I'm not going to say I'm disappointed. I'm really glad that my home park has a B&M Hyper now. But um, I was disappointed with it, you know, dare to say. And, uh, you know, it's just, just kind of sad to see uh, that it wasn't as much as I expected. A lot of people think it's one of, one of the greatest coasters in the world. I, I think it's probably one of the lower end B&M Hypers, at least compared to, you know, a lot of other ones. I haven't gotten on a lot of them. Actually, Nitro's the only one I've gotten on before, but uh, definitely a lot of other ones out there are better. The other B&M Hyper that opened, Orion at Kings Island, I would imagine that's probably got a little bit more going for the Candemonium. But hey, you don't know until you ride it. So don't go by my word. You might enjoy Candemonium a lot more than I did. And that's, uh, that's the beauty of uh, you know being a coaster enthusiast. We all have different opinions. And you're definitely going to see that here in the future. Number four on our list, and, and this could only be lower because... I never got a chance to ride it this year, for obvious reasons. Uh, it's Storm Runner, uh, the Intamin launch coaster, um, and, and I think one of my biggest gripes with this coaster is that it's actually too short. It is really short. Um, I will say, 
Um, I, I think I enjoy it better. I mean, I've only been on the other Intamin Launch Coaster, King Ka before. Um, definitely much more variety than King Ka, and I enjoy uh, that aspect of it. But, um, yeah, it's number four on my list, and, 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 and that could be partly, you know, I have I didn't get the ride of this year, so I don't really have a good measurement on, um, on how it is compared to the other three on the list. But, um, but, yeah, it's a fun ride. You know, obviously you launch right up and then down. You, you know, you go through the little helix thing. Um, you go down, um, get another loop in there or something, and then that's it. Uh, like I said, I think the biggest gripe I have with this coaster is that it's really short. There's, it's, it's really fun. Um, you know, very unique. Very unique layout. It's thinking about Hershey, they got a couple coasters that have extremely unique layouts, and uh, I really like coasters that have that. Um, but yeah, I didn't get the ride Storm Runner this year. Obviously, they had the lawsuit. Um... I'm not gonna go into that one. I think we kind of, kind of all got the idea down on that one. But, uh, but yeah, it's a great coaster, Storm Runner, you know, and uh, hopefully it reopens next year, and uh, definitely get an opportunity to uh, ride that one. And, and you know, maybe, maybe if I ride it again, it, it may beat a couple other coasters here, um, farther up in this list. But that's all I got to say. I did get the ride this year, so I really don't have a good memory on it. But um, really enjoy Storm Runner, obviously. How can he not? And just for reference, I'm not actually a Packers fan per se, but this is just. What I got left in my closet for all the hat changing. Our next coaster in line, number three, is Skyrush. Quite possibly the most polarizing roller coaster in the universe. Um, and it's at my home park. How about that? And uh, before this year, I would have probably put Skyrush in the middle of this list. But I got over the fact that, you know, your legs, you know, hurt a lot on the ride. And, and just try to enjoy it outside of that aspect. And in doing that, and knowing going into the ride, that, yeah, my legs are going to hurt, but I'm just going to suck it up and deal with it. You know what? It's a very fun ride. And I, I put it a little bit lower for that reason. Obviously, we all know know its name, Thigh Crush. Uh, it, it's uh, Restraints on this thing are ridiculous. I do not understand what Intamin was thinking. I, it, I don't know. I just, I don't know. Like I said, I'm not an engineer. Um... But it almost seems like whoever designed those restraints uh, isn't an engineer either. Um, so, yeah, very, very bad restraints. But that is pretty much the only thing wrong with this ride. It does rip you around a lot. If you want a more comfortable ride, you take a middle seat. Obviously, the big selling point for this ride, at least when it opened, were the wing seats on the either side. However, because it has a lot of those really quick transitions like that, um, really quick switchbacks, those, those wing seats... Get a lot more force attached to them, and uh, you're going to be feeling the pain a lot more on those wing seats than you are in the middle seat. So if you want a good ride on this one, I recommend a middle seat where you actually have a floor. Not because you know you're gonna fall down or anything, and you know you want that floor to protect you. No, that's not that's not what it is. Um, but because during those switchbacks, you don't have as much of a of a whip, um, and uh, it does make for a much more enjoyable ride. Um, you, you know, you get airtime. I mean, you don't really get airtime, but you get that ejector airtime in, in some way. Um, obviously, you get stapled on it every time, but uh, you definitely do get that force of going up um, on each one of those hills. You go through it really fast. Very short layout, too. And I know I, I put Stormer a little bit low because it had a short layout, but Sky Rush is kind of short as well. But uh, it's fast. It's actually faster. I think it's faster than Storm, Storm Runner is. And um, it's really, really fun. Um, not as good as its counterpart, um, I guess you could say its Intamin counterpart, I I305, of course I305, um, very, very fun, um, I like I305 better than Skyrush, mainly because I305 is more comfortable, but, um, but yeah, Skyrush is very fun, definitely love the speed, definitely love the transitions, if you're prepared for it to be a rough ride, if you like that kind of intensity, that's the ride for you, but, it does hurt, not as much as it does on Wildcat. It still hurts a little bit, which is why I put it at number three. All around, a very good ride if you get past the restraints. But the restraints are possibly the worst in the world. And if it weren't for the restraints, it, it, would, it would be up there with, with a lot of other world-class coasters. And I hate it because Urshi doesn't technically really have that crown jewel... Skyrush was kind of supposed to be that crown jewel, and Intamin was like, nope, no, we're not, we're not going to do that for you. So that's Skyrush number three on my list here, which leaves two coasters 
left. And you might be wondering, a little interesting to put these two at the top too. You're, you're gonna see what I, what I say here in a moment. So there are two coasters left that I have yet to rank here. Um, and I'm gonna give you the number one first. So, so drum roll please. Which one is it gonna be? Uh, that that was that was kind of embarrassing. My number one favorite coaster at Hershey Park is Fahrenheit. Yes, you, you heard me correctly. I am I am probably the only person in the world uh, who ranks Fahrenheit as the number one coaster at Hershey Park. Um, but I gotta tell you, and I will tell you after I'll tell, go into more detail after I give you number two here. Uh, it is so much fun. Um, but we got to get over number two. Number two, it is also so much fun, and I, I actually debated here uh, between these two coasters. Number two is Great Bear, um, the B and M invert. You can't, you can know, you know, you know, theme park crazy. He says you can't go wrong with a B and M hyper. I say you can't go wrong with a B and M invert. Those things are so much fun, especially in the front row. The these coasters, I, I don't think they're really known for airtime per se. Um, they're but they're more known for for being intense. Uh, who's that on oh my why are you calling me uh anyways i was talking uh, talking about great pair uh great bear there um and and how you can never go wrong with the b&m invert especially on on the front row like i said and that's what i absolutely love about about this coaster like i said you really don't get airtime on these coasters they're not really known for airtime um honestly i really don't know if being a midverts are really known for anything in particular other than the fact that you know you know at the time you know b&m you know designed these they were the first coasters to essentially be underneath the track and still go upside down. So it was a you know pretty big deal back in the day. Um, obviously, you know you know they have kind of lost their luster in the in the coaster world a little bit. Obviously, I love Great Bear, very fun roller coaster. And I mentioned when I was talking about Super Duper Looper, that wasn't the first coaster I rode with an inversion. This one was, and uh, I jumped right into it. Essentially, I was like, you know what, I'm gonna ride a coaster with an inversion, and the first one was Great Bear, and I don't. I don't know if initially I kind of you know opened up to the idea of really liking it, but I as I as I went along in my my coaster enthusiasm, I really started to like this ride. And um, yeah, like I said, especially on the front row, I I waited in line um, this year to get a front row seat. It's something I don't normally do. Obviously, back row is where you want to be for a lot of these coasters, but I think on any B and M invert, front row is the way to go. And this is a nice, this has a very good landscape to it. Obviously a very unique B&M invert as well. You, you kind of have that dip down and then the helix first. And, and it, takes, it takes some time to go down that hill. But then you do go down the hill, you go through the first loop very fast and you go... Um, through the, I think it's called the Inelman. I'm still, I'm still getting used to the names, guys. My apologies. Um, then you got a couple of, um, you got a, now was it, is a Helix? Yeah, you got a Helix and you got a zero-G roll, um, through it. And, uh, it's fast. It's, a, it's another short ride. But I really, really enjoy this on the front row. Obviously, B&M Invert's kind of known for flying. If you want that flying effect, you go on the front row. It is so much fun on the front row. Um, and, and like I said, I almost put this number one. And I really enjoy it. It has a very big personal aspect to me because it was the first roller coaster I rode with an inversion. But like I said, my number one is Fahrenheit. And, and this, this is, this is, you know, it's starting the age, obviously. Starting to get that little rattle to it. I, I can't say B&M rattle because it was designed by Intamin. But it is so much fun. It, it's, what is it? There's nothing like it anywhere. Um, and Intamin made it, so it's very unique. Obviously, Hershey loves their Intamins. Uh, they went with them, uh, you know, every four years for, for three straight, you know, four-year periods. They, they really, uh, put a lot of Intamins in that park. Um, more, more so than a lot of other parks, and I really enjoyed, uh, what they put in. But Fahrenheit, I just love it. Um, you know, there's so much to it. Most inversions out of any coaster at the park, with six... Um, I think that might be part of it, but there's just so much to it. I can't even go through all of it. it, it it's got a co. I think it's got, I think it's Cobra Roll. I think it's got that. Um, what else does it have? It doesn't have a traditional loop. It's got a lot of twists. It's got a lot of helixes. Um, I, I don't know. I, I maybe I should watch a POV and get through all the inversions. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm still kind of a new enthusiast. I'm still kind of, kind of getting used to all the names here, but uh, it's it's so much fun. Absolutely so much fun uh, to ride that thing. And it's a 
bit longer than a lot of the other coasters. A lot of the major coasters there, uh, either way. And um, it's so much fun. There's even, you know, an airtime hill on it. It's got everything. It's got everything. It's got a great drop, got a lot of great inversions, got an airtime hill. It just zips right through it. It's just something about it. I just absolutely love it, its uniqueness, um, you know, it, its its speed. And maybe this is coming from someone who's never ridden a Gerslauer Eurofighter before. Maybe that's why. But I think it's it's just one of the best best coasters out there. Obviously not the best coaster in the world. There are a lot of other coasters out there that are much better. Obviously there's not an RMC on this list. Um, you, you know, I, I think there are a couple better coasters at, at Great Adventure. Maybe even a couple better coasters at King's Dominion here. Obviously King's Dominion has an RMC, so, you know. But, uh, but I love Fahrenheit. I think Fahrenheit is... The, at least personally, maybe not overall for everyone, but for me, my favorite coaster Hershey Park is Fahrenheit because it's just it's got that uniqueness to it. It's fun. I I have never had a bad ride on it, and I don't think I ever will. It's just it's got everything that I feel like a coaster needs. Maybe not everything, but it's got a lot of things that a coaster needs, and uh, does it all so well. And there you have it. That is every coaster at Hershey Park ranked, and. Uh, like I said, very interesting ranking right there, but hey, you know, we're, we're all having fun here, you know, and uh, it's a very personal ranking for me, so hope you guys enjoyed that. Hope you guys, uh, my, my little talking points in each of these roller coasters, even though I still, you know, don't have everything quite quite figured out with roller coasters yet, um, we'll get there uh, in the future. If you want to want me to do more of these, I do have three other parks that I can do these rankings for, uh, Dorney Park, Great Adventure, and King's Dominion. Um... Hopefully next year I get to go to some more parks and we do more of these types of videos. Um, but, uh, you know, you know how the world is, you know, we'll just have to see what 2021 brings, you know, you know, who knows what's going to happen, you know, who knows, you know, just, just go with the flow with things, you know. Um, but yeah, if you like this video, please leave a like, please subscribe if you're new to the channel, definitely appreciate it, definitely trying to get the channel to move up a little bit. I do, you know, I'm definitely going to talk about coasters more in the future, and I'll definitely do more, you know, other things, I do skits. I also do uh, NR73 racing, you know, as well. That's something I've done for a long time. Um, and, yeah, you know, it's a very, very uh, hodgepodgey channel. But you know what? Who cares? You know, I'm having fun doing what I'm doing. I hope you guys enjoy it as well. So thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great day. No, have a have a sweet day because because you're, you're Hershey Park happy now that you've watched this video. Hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day. And I will see you guys later.